Hey, everybody. I hope you're doing well today. Well, we finally made it to exchange rates. Um, this is the introduction and overview video. And I love this unit. It's probably my favorite unit in all of international economics. It's really complex, um, but it's really exciting because you're talking about currency markets and exchange rates and the value of one particular currency priced out in another currency. And it's something that's really confusing to the vast majority of adults in the world, and it's really exciting to watch students understand it. And actually, once you kind of get it, it like it like really clicks, and you get you get it really clear in your mind. Um, what gets confusing is, of course, is you're talking about a currency, say the dollar, being purchased by another currency. And so I live in Chile, so you're talking about a dollar being purchased in pesos. So how much does one dollar cost? Well, one dollar costs seven hundred and ten pesos. Okay, but, so, if, you, so if, if somebody wants to buy a dollar, they're going to have to pay you 710 pesos. But what if you had the pesos? How many pesos would you have to have in order for someone to be willing to buy it in dollars? Well, apparently, you're going to have to have 710 pesos for someone else to buy it with their dollar. Okay, it's the same thing as saying, like, okay, you know, I have a watch, and the watch costs, it's a really cheap watch, and the watch costs 710 pesos. Right? You could also say that the value of 710 pesos is the value of a cheap watch. Just as you could say the value of $1 is 710 pesos. Right? So it, actually, if you think about the currency that's being purchased as a good, not, it's not, but I'm just talking about having an understanding of it, then you real, it gets really clear because you just say, oh, well, the price of the dollar is 710 pesos, just like the price of a really cheap watch is 710 pesos. Okay, so anyway, I love the exchange rates. Let's take a look at it a little bit more in-depthly before we move on to the other videos. Okay, clearly an exchange rate, we need a definition, is the value of one currency expressed in terms of another currency, right? So $1 equals um, 710 Chilean pesos, right? Currencies are exchanged on the foreign exchange market, which is the largest market in the world in terms of cash involvement. That shouldn't be too shocking because, of course, everything changing hands is cash. It's not like you're changing wheat and dollars. You're changing, you know, pesos for dollars. So the entire transaction <laughs> is like doubled, right, by the value of the cash, Okay, so, but who does this? Really, the market includes the trading of foreign currencies between governments, central banks, private commercial banks, multinational corporations, and other financial institutions. We're not talking about, uh, when we talk about the, the, the world financial market, we're not talking about us as citizens, like, walking up and changing our, you know, our, our Argentinian pesos for Chilean pesos. It's not like getting our Guatemalan quetzales changed for U.S. dollars. No, it's not like that at all. We're way too small. These are huge corporations, governments, and whatnot that, that, that work in the currency market. Okay, so therefore, none of us really have an ability to change it um, because we're all too small. It's, a, it's, the, it's the big players in the world that really affect the exchange rates. The other thing I like just to throw in there is very, very much of currencies is, is psychological. It's, it's not totally that much different than say like the stock market, you know, what gets traded on the stock market? Well, stock gets traded for a, a currency. In the case of the New York Stock Exchange, you know, U.S. stocks get exchanged for U.S. dollars. Um, the currency, and, and why would somebody buy, um, you know, Apple stock? Well, they would buy Apple stock because they think that Apple's going to do better in the future than now. Okay, so you kind of get that. So they pay a certain dollar amount for for their Apple stock. All right, that's the same thing. The currency markets are kind of similar, much bigger players and much more higher volume. But they're saying like, okay, you know, the, think of instead of Apple, think about, okay, the Chilean economy. Let's see, do I think the Chilean economy is going to do better? And if the Chilean economy is going to do better, then maybe I should buy some Chilean pesos. And as a result of buying the Chilean peso, you know, the demand for that will go up, right? And as a result, maybe I can make some money in the future. So it's kind of a bet on a currency. Not totally. It's more complex than that. But I just like to say that in a simple way. Don't, like, nail it down. Is that simplistic? It's not. But oftentimes, currency markets um, operate the same. Okay. There's many other factors involved in currency exchange rates. All right. So what kind of exchange rate systems are there? Well, there are three main ones, which are really just two, and then mix them. There's a fixed exchange rate system. There is a floating exchange rate system, and there's a managed exchange rate regime. Okay, so um, we're going to take a look at those, and we will 
have a thorough understanding of exchange rates at the end of this unit. It's super cool. I hope you enjoy it. I hope this video was helpful. Talk to you in a bit.